Certain established cliches in horror games, such as a foreboding atmosphere, jump scares, or horrific creature designs, serve to make them scary. One such stereotype that pops up now and again includes a game introducing a particularly dangerous adversary whose main purpose is to hunt you down throughout the game. They will pursue you, no matter how quickly you flee, or where you try to hide, and fighting is generally futile, because it is either extremely difficult or impossible to win. Here are a few of the most notable gaming instances. Alien, Isolation harnesses the Xenomorph, one of cinema's most terrifying monsters, to produce one of the scariest horror games ever developed. You're trapped aboard the Sevastopol trading station, trying to flee, while the Xenomorph hunts you with terrifying intelligence. It can inspect hiding places like lockers, ambush you from the vents, and it is unkillable. The flamethrower might keep it at bay, but only if you have enough fuel, and the Xenomorph can sense when that's gone as well. Resident Evil 2 may have established the series's notion of being pursued by a sentient bioweapon that wants to murder you, but Nemesis in the sequel increased the ante. Nemesis is unrelenting in his pursuit of you, whether you're playing the PS1 original or the 2020 remake. He'll emerge out of nowhere by breaking through a wall, despite his size, he's surprisingly quick, and it only takes a few swings for him to gravely damage Jill. Even if you kill him, he'll just reappear later. The psychological horror of Silent Hill 2's finest feature is how it creates an atmosphere of unease that remains throughout the story and penetrates your head. There's always something hiding in the fog or around a corner, ready to ambush you, and then you come upon Pyramid Head. This pyramid helmeted menace is unsettling just to look at, and you begin to dread all future gaming sequences since you know you'll have to face him again, and you have no idea what to anticipate. Although the Slender games are not as complicated as other horror games, they nevertheless manage to give a terrifying experience. You're pursued by the titular Slenderman across each level, and you only have a flashlight to guide you. To make matters worse, if you glance at him, he becomes more aggressive, and he also becomes more aggressive as you fulfill your objectives, so you spend the entire game knowing he's right behind you, and the static as he approaches adds to the dread. Outlast places you in a fully vulnerable position as a journalist confined in an asylum, where bizarre experiments are taking place. Only a video camera is available, and the only way to view is to use the camera's night vision mode, which depletes the camera's battery. Everything in Outlast is out to murder you, and the only option to get away is to flee or hide, otherwise, you're in for a terrible death if you're caught. Inside puts you in the shoes of a little kid fleeing a repressive regime in a world that appears to be falling apart. The beginning alone is frightening, as you narrowly escape guards and dogs, but it's halfway through when things start to get spooky. Not only must you go underwater through several collapsed buildings, but a siren-like creature pursues you with remarkable strength and speed, despite the hardened glass of a submersible's inability to stop her. Amnesia, The Dark Descent, one of the most popular indie horror games of all time, makes excellent use of physics and music to create a terrifying environment. You have to navigate a watery hallway in one area while a blind, unseen creature chases you by splashing around. Other times, you'll need to slam a door behind you to slow down the monster after you, which is much more difficult when your hand is shaking too much to control the mouse properly. Thanks to the Emmy robots, Metroid Dread manages to be a highly effective horror game, although it's crucial to remember that Fusion did it first with the SAX in 2002. This parasitic clone of Samus has all of her powers and weapons, and it spends much of its time wandering around the game's space station. 
Its appearances may be staged, but the way it kills Samus demonstrates its intelligence, it freezes her and shoots her with a super missile, which is the same method Samus used against conventional Metroids. Clock Tower is a point-and-click adventure game from 1995 that also works as a horror game. You take on the role of Jennifer, an adoptive orphan who is continually pursued by Scissorman, a terrifying monster wielding a massive pair of bloodied scissors. Jennifer frequently trips or stumbles when she encounters Scissorman, and she is unable to stop him. She has no choice but to conceal, and the restrictions of a point-and-click adventure make this a significantly more difficult chore than in other games. Phasmophobia adds a nice variation to the formula by having you actively try to start a hunt so you can figure out what kind of paranormal presence is haunting the building you've been sent to examine. Even if you're playing in co-op, the game remains unsettling because more people means more targets for the ghost to try to kill and no one knows who, if, or when the ghost will strike. All you have to do now is keep an eye out for warning signs and hope for the best.